Otter at 9 a.m. on Thursday, December 17th, 2020. I would ask that everyone bear with me because I'm obliged to read a rather lengthy opening statement. Good morning and welcome to the December 17th, 2020 Board of Assessors meeting. As chair of the Board of Assessors, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are A, providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing Zoom through the city's IT department for this electronic meeting. All members of the Board of Assessors have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen into this meeting through dialing the following number, 929-205-6099. Once again, that number is 929-205-6099. And using the meeting ID number 897-4674, 4167. Once again, that number is 897-4674-4167 and password of 328-688. And once again, the password number is 328-688. The public may also view the meeting on Comcast Channel 16. B, providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have also been provided, been provided on the City of Nashua's website at nashuanewhampshire.gov and publicly noticed at Nashua City Hall and the Nashua Public Library. C, providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821-2049. Once again, that number is 603-821-2049, and they will help you connect. D, adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, the reason they are not able to attend the meeting in person, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. At this time, I'll call the roll. Mr. Early. This is Robert Early, a member of the Board of Assessors. I am following the governor's executive order and joining the meeting remotely from home. There is no one in the room with me. Mr. Bertrand. This is Paul Bergeron, a member of the Board of Assessors. I'm also following the governor's advisory and joining the meeting remotely from home. There is no one in the room with me. I'm Daniel Hansberry, a member of the Board of Assessors. I'm following the governor's advisory, joining the meeting from home, and there was no one in the room with me. Please direct all testimony to this board and not to anyone in the audience. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have questions, they are to be directed to the board, and we will do our best to get them answered. Ms. Brown, are there any changes to today's agenda? There are no changes. Okay, thank you. All right, is there a motion to waive the reading of the Board of Assessors meeting minutes from December 3rd, 2020, accept them and place them on file? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Are there any errors or corrections? Okay, seeing none, I will call the roll to approve the minutes as presented. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansberry? Yes. Motion is adopted. Is there a motion to waive the reading of the non-public meeting minutes from the meeting held by the Board of Assessors on December 3rd, 2020, accept them and place them on file? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Are there any errors or corrections? Seeing none, I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansberry, yes. Minutes are accepted as presented. 
communications. At this time, I would recognize uh, Kimberly Klein, who is the Director of Administrative Services for the City of Nashua, and part of her responsibility is oversight of the assessing department. Director Klein, good morning. Good morning, Chair, uh, Board. I will um, share my screen um, so members at home may read along if they desire. So um, due to uh, issues related to COVID-19, uh, we requested an extension on the sales ratio study from the New Hampshire Department of Revenue um, that has been approved and the report is now due January 15th. Um, and I'd like to speak a little bit about the issues when I say related to COVID, our assessors are doing everything possible in a limited um, atmosphere to gain information about these sales. So whether it's sales letters, whether it's speaking um, to the new owner, the seller, um, but due to COVID-19, we are limited on, as you well know, um, interior inspections and things of that sort. Um, so verifying those sales has taken a little longer, not just for us, um, others as well. Um, there's also the issue of them still being remote, which again um, was not expected, but due to COVID-19 and the delay of materials um, for the city renovation project, um, so that's what I mean by what I say, issues related to COVID-19. Um, this is not um, unfamiliar territory to us. Um, we did request an extension last year um, and granted, was granted one for different reasons. Um, our assessors continue to work hard researching the sales, entering the changes into the CAMA system remotely. We have received some inquiries from residents regarding property record cards and data on the website. Our information technology team is working with Patriot Systems um, to update our web pro software. Now that's the software that houses and displays uh, assessing parcel data, as well as the newly added last year assessor's property record card. Um, the software requires updates due to the implementation of the AP5 camera system. So in order to make the two communicate properly, we must make these upgrades and programming changes to WebPro. Um, they're working as, as hard as they can. Um, and we hope that it's finished by the end of this month um, and those property record cards will be online. If any resident needs a property record card, they may call or email the department. We're happy to announce um, earlier, we communicated to the board um, that a new property uh, sales search um, is live on the city's website. Uh, you can access it uh, by the assessing page on the website. The GIS department um, worked hard. Um, we knew that we wanted to get this up in time for people to use it should they have abatements. Um, they worked with CDM Smith of Manchester who does a lot of programming of our GIS system. Um, the web application provides detailed information uh, regarding property sales in the city for a five-year time period. Um, and there's a full article uh, under news on the city website if you want more information about the tool. On December 8th, I provided the board via email a press release announcing the hiring of our new chief assessor, Richard Vincent. Mr. Vincent has more than 
more than 40 years of real estate appraisal experience, um, including more than 20 years of real estate assessing experience um, and residential construction experience. And I know the board um, met him briefly um, during his interview. Um, we are very pleased that Mr. Vincent has accepted and decided to join the city. Uh, this is an important role. We believe that his uh, strong knowledge of assessing standards and best practices will continue to move the department forward. Uh, he will be available for the Board of Assessors first meeting in January and moving forward after today. Um, he will provide the department's update. As division director, I'll continue to be in attendance and provide as much support as I can to the chief assessor. Um, and the two of us will be working very closely, um, but he'll be reporting at future board meetings. Also attached to this update is uh, the most recent status update from Vision Government Solution, um, also available on the website. Vision is approximately 61% complete. And today we have the pleasure to welcome, to welcome Mike Torello, June Paris, and Steve Whalen from Vision Government Solution, who will provide the board with an update. Thank you. Are there any questions for Director Kleina? Um, I have one question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Early? Um, this year, are there more or fewer sales than previous years? Is this a typical year? I was just curious, given the COVID-19, are there more sales than usual? So it's, it's, that's interesting um, to ask because we still see the sales and we still see sales being high at this, at this time. Um, so you, you would expect um, but remember, again, we're looking back from 2019. So you still have, you know, half of the time period before COVID even existed to right. us in knowledge. Um, so maybe we'll see something different um, next year, but we're still seeing the same number of sales and, and the same high values. Okay, thank you. Other questions for Director Kleiner? No. Director Kleiner, when uh, Mr. Vincent joins us, you said you'd be also attending the meetings. Is that going to be just for a transition period, or do you plan to do that on a regular basis? Well, certainly during the transition period, um, and Mr. Norman, who's also on the call um, meeting today, um, he'll be working, we'll both be working. Um, with Mr. Vincent through the transition period. Um, after that, it may um, be as my time allows, um, as I have other city projects that are going to require um, my direction. <laughs> um, but, you know, as now we've moved, um, Mr. Vincent and I will continue to work closely together um, since assessing is part of the administrative services division. Okay, thank you. All right, so at this time I'd recognize uh, the group present from Vision Government Solutions to address the board. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, how are you today? Fine, thanks. Good, well, I'm happy to be back again and um, you know, as you can see, you have my update. And really, we're still just in phase one of the data collection. So, you know, just like I told you the last time we were here, um, the team is still moving forward. Um, we're at 61% now, and they're still going. And we've also, you know, started the commercial data collection, and um, that's been going along well. We're, we're just finishing up Ward 2. So Ward 1 and 2 is done with the commercials and we'll be going into Ward 3. So we're just moving forward there and we're starting um, to send out notification letters for Ward 7. Uh, it's uh, scheduled for the first week of January. 
So we're just proceeding as we've been doing, and so far so good. Where exterior measures is going good, the team has no complaints. They're out there doing their thing. Um, so building permits, we're ongoing doing building permits. Where uh, what Rick is trying to do there is staying with the wards that we've completed so far, so he can keep going back to those and rechecking them for percent complete. Um, we're gonna be looking to start um, data entering what we do have complete on a regular basis. So the board will have time or the assessor's office will have time to review those building permits. Um, so, so far, so good. Great. Questions for Ms. Perry? I don't have any. Nor do I. Ms. Perry, on the commercial and industrial buildings, are you gaining entry into those buildings? No, we're not. Right now, we're just doing exterior measurements. So just like the residentials, we, you know, knock, we introduce ourselves wherever we can talk to somebody, and we explain why we're there. We're doing the exterior measurements. And then when we go to send the callback letters, they'll get a letter as well for an appointment to do the interiors. Okay. And when you going along as you're going along with just the exteriors, when do you anticipate that that would be done? The interiors? No, the, no, the, just the exteriors. Do, going along and doing what you're doing right now and assuming that you're continuing to be denied entry into any building, when would you be done with this phase of your work? Um, well, we're scheduled to be done um, hopefully by December of this year, and I don't see any of 21. I don't see any reason why we won't be done if before that, to be quite honest, because um, we're already ahead of schedule now. We were hoping to be 50% by the end of December and we're at 61. So, you know, we'll have no problem getting the measurements done. Um, you know, and then when we, as soon as it allows and we're able to start sending out the appointment letters for interior inspections, that's how we'll proceed with phase two of the data collection. And that's driven by the state, correct? I mean, the state's going to make that decision, correct? That, well, the, between the CDC and, and your own city, um, when it's safe, when we all feel like it's safe to get in again and, and everybody's in agreement. Because right now we have, we're, we're suspended interior inspections until such time as we're all in agreement to move forward. And under the circumstances, I mean, it depends upon what news outlet you're listening to. It's anywhere from... April, where it's going to be available, the vaccine is going to be available for the general public into the fall. Mm -hmm. So if it went into the fall, say it went into October, would it be unlikely that you would gain entry into the buildings at all? October's late. That's late in the game for us to be sending out callback letters. So, you know, I hate to speculate until we decide what we're going to do. You know, my best case scenario would be us, for us to be able to start sending those letters out in June to start doing interior inspections. You know, if I was to lay out a plan of how many we do per month and to get them done on a timely basis, that's really what I'm looking at. Um, if we get into October, we would have to reevaluate that and take another real close look at the timeline. Okay. Then I have a, another question for you. It was based on an article that was in the Wall Street Journal on Tuesday. And it's talking about how things are changing in real estate. Uh, a lot of that's been driven by Amazon. And the author saying that retail is becoming less valuable because there's less of a demand for retail space. And then with the telecommuting that's happened and companies are receptive to the telecommuting, that office space is becoming less valuable because there's less of a demand for space. The one area where the author was saying where there is an increase in value, and once again, Amazon's driving this, that warehouses are increasing in value because there's such a demand for warehouses. Although warehouses do not begin to approach the value that you'd have in a retail development or in an office pack or office complex. So if you look at a state like New Hampshire, particularly a city like Nashua, 
what's probably going to happen as a result of this revaluation is that the residential property owners are going to carry a larger percentage of the tax burden than commercial industrial buildings. Do you agree with that author's premise? Is that, is that what you're seeing as your company works not just in Nashville, but throughout the region? Hmm. I can take uh, it if you want me to. Sure. Hi, it's Mike Torello. I'm the uh, vice president of the appraisal operations. I think we've met before early on in this, this session. Um, we have seen the effects of COVID having um, currently a negative effect on those um, classes that you mentioned, the retail and the office. Um, however, it's, it's unprecedented times, obviously. And those areas, of course, have been affected due to the uh, restrictions for access. Um, and we are seeing that those leases and vacant leases are dropping and the vacancies are increasing. Um, however, going forward, um, there, there appears to be usually that there'll be a leveling off and values would probably start to come back to some degree. However, I do want to make it clear that even before COVID, and, you, and a lot of you have probably seen this, there has been a shift in uh, mall type properties and retail properties, brick and mortar, where there was already starting to be uh, the effects of the internet and so forth uh, and people shopping online. And we continue to see that that pattern was going to continue. So there was already a a trend for a downward turn in those classes. And then the COVID has um, increased that. So going forward, um, I think there will be a new set level of values in those types of properties. Now, Nashua, it might be interesting with the office because a lot of the major cities um, like Boston and maybe Concord and Capitals are uh, really seeing a lot of people uh, go to the suburbs and moving back to the suburbs. And they're also looking at, companies are looking at leasing office space more away from the greater Boston area and maybe like the Concord, Manchester area. So Nashua with its large suburban uh, base may not do quite as bad with the office as um, areas where they might have had to travel even into Boston and so forth from Nashua, there may be space being rented in the areas on the Route 3 corridor um, for, because people will want to be closer to home and may work at home more often, um, but they'll still want to have some kind of a, a office presence or something for them to work at, especially as things clear out and they're allowed to go back into the office areas. So it'll be interesting to see how deep these changes are once stability comes back. Um, I don't know if that really helps. <laughs> no, I think that's very insightful, but you're clearly you're not as sanguine as far as uh, the retail goes. I mean, Nashville, obviously we're right on the border we're a retail mecca. We have just about every store imaginable. Yes. That, that's pr probably going to change is what you're implying, correct? I think to some degree. Yeah, I think you've probably seen that some of these chains were already struggling. Some of the boutique things, you know, like Talbot's and Taylor, different things like that. I think that the supermarkets and the large um, department type areas will probably do well. I think the mall is like all malls is struggling. And I believe that that might have to, um, they may have to do certain things. And I think that the malls are working at that to uh, rebrand their products and do different things to uh, maintain um, a high level of vacancy and reasonable leasing patterns. We see that certain malls are actually taking open space and putting in office space, medical space, redirecting things more of a multi-use. So I think you're going to see uh, a lot of that in the retail where it's uh, 
multi-use type of uh, functionality that adapts to the brick and mortar effects from the uh, online shopping. And Mr. Troll, this is uh, something that's beyond your control. I was hoping that uh, homeowners would be cooperative, we'd gain access, or you'd gain access to a lot of the private residences. And I just anecdotally, you get the sense that there have been improvements through the years. I think I'd use an example with Ms. Perry at a prior meeting, like a, a four room expansion cape that's now a six room, two bath cape that uh, maybe the work was done offline and never reported or a ranch style home where the family grew and they had to put a bathroom and a bedroom in the basement. And uh, I was hoping that that would be captured and people would be paying a fair share of property taxes, which in theory is what should be happening. Um, but there's a strong likelihood, depending upon what happens with COVID, that you may not be able to discover any of that undiscovered value, correct? Not fully correct. I think that if, if we have trouble getting in, and the concern I have is even if legally we're allowed to attempt to access to get in, over the next few months, say the spring and the summer, I still think a lot of people are going to be very concerned about letting someone in the home. Uh, and I think you would probably agree with that, considering what we've been through. So we have used other measures uh, like a data mailer and so forth in other communities to gather the information and have confirmation of corrections and so forth. Um, we're always looking at anything on the internet for all the sales properties. The permits, of course, uh, we're, we'll have those permits and they'll all identify the things that are going on. Uh, so I still think that we can do a sweeping review of all the work. It just may be that uh, we'll have trouble getting into the expected percentage that we normally do. I do have to tell you over time, in the last five to 10 years, the entry rate, no matter how many times we try to you know, attempt to get in and leave a, maybe a door hanger or send a letter has decreased. You know, people are working two jobs, people are more wary of people coming in because of safety. What used to be 10, 12 years ago, um, you could get into 60, 70% of the properties, even with entries and so forth and second letters the percentages have dropped on average to more, maybe a 30 to 40%. So even if we did make all those attempts, there'd still be a, a lighter entry than in the past. So using other methods like the uh, data mailer, um, you know, and then information from listings and, and so forth, and of course the permanent information uh, might actually give you a better uh, return of information than um, trying to get into 30 to 40% after many attempts. But if somebody purchased a house, say 35 years ago, and went ahead and made those improvements and bypassed the permitting process, you'd have no way of capturing that, assuming the original owner is still there, correct? Um, well, even if you attempt to go in, they don't have to let you in. So. Right. A lot of times, if they know that they've made changes, they may, you know, would they let you in? It's questionable. Some, of course, would. Some may not. So that's why we found that sending out a, a data form with information and requesting them to sign it for validity has been somewhat helpful in gathering more information um, and getting a better return. Um, not that that was scheduled to do that, and we, of course, have planned to get into every property. But these are unprecedented times. So with the legislative changes in all the states we've had, we've tried to be as creative as possible to get as most accurate information from the interiors through any technological methods that we can determine uh, just to get as much information and being accurate as possible. The good news is if we're out there inspecting the outsides and they put like maybe a small addition in the back or did something that maybe they didn't take a permit out for, we'll pick all that up. So I think you're right. The concern is restructuring of 
maybe a kitchen or finishing a basement. And we will have all the records. So even if we have to attempt to get in, but can't get into all of them due to a time, we do have other methods of uh, requesting information to at least uh, have an inventory and attempt to get as accurate information as we can under the circumstances. And just a, a general question, do the socioeconomics of a community drive how many homes you get into? For example, do you get into more homes in a Newton mass than you would in a Lowell mass, or is it just the opposite, or ha has no bearing whatsoever? Um, it's kind of hard to say. It does seem the averages are relatively close, depending on the, what community, if it's an urban or if it's a suburban community. It just seems to be of oh, the success on a normal time period when we're able to do the process that we had planned to do here. That you know, if we can get into you know 40 or 45 percent, that's a successful process. Unfortunately, um, I think it's a lot. Is that um, it? See, let me explain. Years ago, I've been doing this since the 80s, so I started out going into homes a long time ago. And I started in um, Medford, Mass. And back then, believe it or not, you would get in due to a lot of the grandparents living at the homes and the elderly. The parents would be working and then they would be home. So you go in and you couldn't get out of the house because they would, they would want to give you a cake and coffee. They had someone to talk to. I swear I was in more of those. I was gaining weight doing the job. <laughs> But that's changed, you know, over the years, people like that have gone to assisted livings and to other facilities and yet the parents still work the two jobs or work odd jobs where one works at night, one works during the day, depending on the children's situation. Um, and so it's just been less people at the door to greet you. And then, you know, think about it. They work all day and then you knock on the door at 5.15 to say, hey, I was here earlier. Can I come in and check for a minute? You know, they're making dinner, they're getting ready. And it's just no one has a good time for it. Sometimes we would do things on a Saturday morning and some would be okay with that because they'd be home. But then they're like, oh, geez, you know, you're coming on a Saturday. <laughs> so it's just difficult to get an um, entry because so uh, the way that things are socially and the way homes are now is just different from say 15, 20, 25 years ago. So that's why technology though has also changed. And that's why we try to use that technology, um, you know, pictometry and all the different other aspects of technology to uh, try to maintain as accurate information as possible on these homes. Thank you. Other questions for Mr. Trello? No, that was very helpful. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Go right ahead. Um, given that we, we can't do the interior inspections right now, uh, the, the data requests aren't going out right now either. Is there a time frame for sending those out? Should they be sent out? ahead of the, you know, we don't know when it's, we're going to be able to get into homes. Um, I think that June can add to this, but we were discussing it actually yesterday. And we think like the deadline to do something in the sense of send out callback letters or send out data mailers has got to start somewhere in maybe the May, June time period for us to stay on schedule. Yes. trying to give it enough time for the vaccine and for the governments to make a decision on what's going to happen. And then when that happens, I think the city is going to have to make a decision on, do we use all methods of technology and information? Uh, we could ask for the callbacks and then say, if you're uncomfortable with that, um, we've been also included a data mailer. There's so many different things that you can do. But we're going to have to act and make the decisions, I would think, no later than May or June. Uh, June, do you want to add to that? Is that accurate? Yeah, I, I think we're, we're in agreement on that. Even, even if we could wait until June, um, you know, 
the data mailer I like because I find it very transparent. It's here's your information. This is what we have on your property record card. And, you know, people are asked to sign it and to send it back in and they put their phone number. So if we have questions on it, it's just another great way to communicate with the property owner. And at the same time, they're able to verify what information do we have on their property record card. Um, you know, in addition, we, we have done, um, you know, phone interviews to call people back to talk to them. We can have pictures sent. Um, or hopefully the vaccine comes into place and we're able to just move forward with the regular interior inspections. Um, but maybe a combination of the two is a really good thing for us to take a look at. Yeah, I'll just add a little bit to that. I think this year and maybe even next year, um, we have to think a little bit out of the box and make sure that we can blanket as much um, coverage of the interiors as possible to get the best reflection of accuracy. And even if the best scenario occurs and say by May, these restrictions are off and people are able to act pretty much normal and do most of the normal things they've been able to do. I just think the stigma of allowing people in the house is going to be um, higher than it was obviously before this. I, I, I would think you would agree. And so we may want to evaluate some kind of a combination of attempting that, but also uh, maybe having that data information um, option ready to be combined with it or deal with certain sections. I mean, we can go back to the businesses and that won't be a problem to get into those. Um, but it's just, you know, their businesses, they'll let you in, especially if they're legally allowed. They've been trying to get people in there, you know. Um, but I think it's going to be just uh, a while before people are comfortable to let people back in their homes. And I think just if you thought of it yourself, you know, you might be wary of having someone come in. Of course, we could still have masks on and gloves and so forth and do it even at that time period. But um, I think we really have to evaluate it and try and determine um, and be flexible that we may have to do things a little bit differently in the, you know, in the next starting in May or June for that time period so that we can stay on schedule because we really want to start getting everything ready with the analysis at the end of 21, early 22 to stay on schedule. Are there other questions? Do staff members have any questions for the vision team? Everybody's all set. Well, thank you very much. This was very helpful. I appreciate sure. it. Sure. Have a happy holiday. Yes, yeah, same. Thank you, too. Thank you. All right, we're gonna. You folks, if, if there are no other questions, you folks are free to leave if you like. We're just gonna. Okay. This is part of the meeting. But once again, thank you very much. Okay. Take care, everyone. You too. Bye. -bye. Stay safe. Stay safe. All right. New business, Mr. Mandel. You have an an adjustment for us, an abatement for us. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, Board. I have an in-house. I'm on. I have an in-house correction for 21 Saturn Lane. Uh, the board had already addressed this property back in November and approved a supplemental bill for $1,132. At the time, I did not know that a tax bill had already been sent for the entire year in the amount of $1,743. Um, by the time I was made aware of this, the taxpayer had already made the payment. Um, uh, approving this abatement for the first tax bill that was sent for $1,700 will enable the city to refund the taxpayer the difference between the two bills. The amount, incidentally, is $610.37. And I excuse my throat's a little froggy today. Excuse me. <laughs> but the amount you want us to approve is the $1,743.23. Is that correct? It's actually just to eliminate the full, the uh, tax bill that was first sent to the uh, taxpayer. That is correct. Okay. The supplemental bill remains in effect. Okay. 
Are there any questions for Mr. Mandel? No, I have no questions. No. Is there a motion to approve the abatement of tax bill number 52336 for the property located at 21 Satin Lane in the amount of $1,743.23? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Your hands very yes. Motion is adopted. Does that conclude your report, Mr. Mandel? It does. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dame, you have an abatement for us? Yes, I do. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Hansberry, uh, and, and good morning to everyone. Uh, property at 34 Franklin Street, uh, owned by Lofts 34. Uh, this is a, a property which was uh, one of several brought before the board uh, for its uh, November 5th meeting. Uh, the, the property uh, was in the, in the midst of a negotiation settlement, which was reached in October uh, of uh, this year. And uh, a packet was prepared and brought before the board. The board uh, approved the uh, assessment reduction. Uh, and that uh, has that, that occurred at a time when the tax bills were in the process of uh, being uh, prepared and uh, printed uh, for mailing distribution. So as I've stated in my abatement recommendation, I'm, I'm requesting uh, that the um, that, that the 2019 uh, assessment be carried forward that, to uh, the year 2020. Uh, in as much as no, no further changes were made with the property from 2019. Uh, and by, uh, by, by agreement, uh, the intent was to, what was to uh, uh, list this as, as a reassessment uh, for 2020. Uh, the, the matter was also reviewed by uh, Mr. Norman and uh, he has submitted uh, a, a memo to that effect uh, as well. And I'd be happy to take any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Dame? No, I don't have any. Um, I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Go right ahead. So no, no changes have been made to the building since 2019? Uh, the, the building was, was finished. A certificate of occupancy was issued. They already had a waiting list of uh, tenants to move in. Uh, they have since uh, continued renting apartments. In effect, the project was finished uh, after 2019. Uh, so there was, uh, there has been no, no further uh, building permits of any size needed. The project was completed. Weren't they building um, some amenities to the building, like adding, um, I think changing a, a one building into almost all like a theater and some other function rooms? Yes, that property is known as 21 Front Street, and that and that and that was uh, uh, a a uh, a property that was not appealed. The work was completed on that as well uh, uh, during um, uh, the the relevant time period. Okay, I have no other questions. Thank you, Mr. Dane. When something like this happens, this is a tremendous plus for the city. Looking at the value of the building before the conversion. Happened. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but it was assessed for under $2 million. So this is huge when these developers come in, isn't it? Yes. Uh, to be fair about it, the developer invested over $19 million in, in taking what was a shell building, shell buildings, uh, and, uh, and, and transforming them in, into a greater asset, uh, adding uh, several hundred apartments. And one of two projects uh, in this general area, the other project, uh, uh, being uh, Cotton Mill Square, uh, which was completed in the early 2010s. So the, 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 essentially the entire neighborhood has been transformed with, with hundreds of, of modern apartments uh, constructed uh, in this area. And part of it is the attraction of, of the, uh, being in the downtown area, having an overlook uh, over the, uh, the, the water courses like the, the river and what have you. Right. Is there a motion to approve the abatement reduction for the property located at 34 Franklin Street to $24,299,000 for 2020? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. 
And you specifically want the year 2020 in there, correct? And just 2020, correct, Mr. Dame? Uh, 2020, and it carries forward depending upon uh, uh, whether or not any other building improvements are pulled for the same project, which I doubt very much. Everything in the building is brand new. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? All right, I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansberry? Yes. The motion is adopted. Does that conclude your report? It does. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Turgis, you have something for us for one cardinal circle? Yes, um, it was basically it's just a correction last uh, meeting and I believe it was mentioned that it was one cathedral ceiling, uh, circle when you made the motion, the property is one cardinal circle. Okay, so we need to uh, apologize for that. We need, oh, no we need to amend the motion then? I believe that's what you need to do, but I am not an expert on that. I just, we just, just want to make sure it's correct, that's all. Okay, so is there a motion to uh, amend? Well, I guess we've got to, at this point, we've got to reconsider it, right? Okay, so the property is one cardinal circle, right? Correct. And it was, it was one cathedral circle. Right, it was, uh, when the motion was made, it was mentioned that it was one cathedral circle. Okay, all right. Everything else is the same. It's just a matter of correcting that statement. Okay. All right, so is there a motion to reconsider the motion relative to one cathedral circle? So moved. Is there a second? I would second that. Okay. So now we need an amendment to change it from one cathedral circle to one cardinal circle. So is there a, well, I guess we need to a vote on the motion to reconsider. All right, so I'll call the roll as so we're voting on whether or not to approve the motion to reconsider. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Yes, right, yes. Okay, so now the original motion is before us. So is there a motion to correct the address uh, and change it from one cathedral circle to one cardinal circle? Uh, Mr. Chairman, can you refresh my memory? Is that a uh, commercial property? No, it's a residential property up off of Broad Street, like up near where the National High School North is and uh, the Broad Street Elementary School oh, okay. on the opposite side of the street. All right, so moved. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Is there any discussion? Okay, so now we're going to vote on the amendment to change the address from one cathedral circle to one cardinal circle. I'll call the roll, Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Bergeron. Yes. The answer is yes. Okay, now we have to vote on the motion as amended, which would the motion would read that the address is one mm -hmm. cardinal circle. So is there uh, a motion to uh, approve the motion? Yeah, so we, we need to move to approve the motion as amended. So does somebody want to make that motion? Uh, so moved. Okay, is there a second? No, I'll second that. All right, is there any discussion? All right, I'll call the roll, Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Bergeron. Yes. Mr. Hansberry, yeah. So that does what it needs to do, Mr. Turgis? I believe it does, but again, I'm not an expert on that part of it, but I believe that will do it. Okay, you, you okay with that, Director Kleiner? Yes, thank you, Chair. You're welcome. Mr. Chairman, if, if I may? Yes. Um, I wonder if we should also then correct the minutes from our last meeting. I know we've already accepted them as presented, uh, however, in looking at those minutes, uh, I see on page nine that Mr. Turgis introduced the in-house correction as one cardinal circle, but on page 10, as he pointed out, the, uh, the motion to approve the assessment was for one cathedral circle. So I wonder if we should amend those minutes so that the word cathedral is uh, replaced with the word um, cardinal. So if anyone goes back to those minutes, the, the confusion has been uh, corrected. Or is this just unnecessary? Well, we've, we've, that action has just occurred now, though, right? Yeah. Yes, so, I see. Yeah, so I, I think it would. I think the proper thing would be to have it appear in the subsequent minutes, the minutes for this meeting. Yeah, I think that's right. 
I mean, logically, would, would that make sense? That makes sense. That makes sense. Yes. I would agree. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any, there's no public comment, Director Kleiner, or has somebody joined the meeting since we started? Laura Cajon. Okay. Yes, sir. Just before we begin that, I originally, it looked like there weren't going to be any members of the public. I just want to remind everyone, and at the last meeting, as it turned out, there weren't any members of the public present, but I want the public to keep in mind the fact that the board has no oversight of personnel within the assessing department. That would include by extension, Director Kleiner. So we are not in charge of the hiring, the retention, the promoting, mm. the disciplining, terminating of personnel. Also in the past, there have been concerns brought up about the City Corporation Council's office. We have absolutely no authority over the City Corporation Council's office or the personnel in that office. So directing concerns about personnel to this board is not appropriate because we don't have the authority to act on any concerns that you might raise. So I would ask that you not raise concerns about personnel. If you do raise them, you'll be cautioned. And then if you persist in continuing along that line of uh, thinking, you will sacrifice your time. So I just want people to be crystal clear on that because you, you, if, you if you're seeking a redress of grievance, relative to some employee in the city, we are not authorized to address that grievance. So at this time, Ms. Cocahoon, if you could uh, once again state your name, please, and your address for the record. It's Laura Cahoon at 30 Greenwood Drive. And I was on the meeting last time, I just didn't say anything. First, I was taken back by your comments, uh, Mr. Early, uh, from the meeting. Uh, it is your job to make sure that the assessment department is following the rules and regulations of the state of New Hampshire. If a resident finds the assessing department personnel is not doing their job correctly, it is the responsibility of the Board of Assessors to take note and make sure that they are following the rules. If you find that you cannot do this, Mr. Early, then maybe you should resign and let somebody else do the job. Mr. Early, you may not realize this, but it is the assessing personnel that makes up the assessing department, and therefore a resident has the right to address the problem about the personnel. And you are treating the public like we're children, and we are not, and we do not really take that. It, it just makes me furious that you think we're children, okay? Um, you're running a place like Hitler, and I don't like it. Thank you. Just for the record, I'm Mr. Hansbury, but it's probably possible to allow for that error because my maternal grandmother's name was early, so uh, oh, maybe wow, I didn't know had that. a mistake. Um, but once again, it's, I'm Hansbury. <laughs> He's early. <laughs> the other guy's Bergeron. <laughs> okay. Uh, comments by members of the board. <laughs> The whole board just I'm makes me sorry. so upset that I, I made a mistake, but it's still the fact that this board is supposed to address problems and they don't want to hear them. Thank you. You're welcome. Lori Ortolano. Mrs. Ortolano, if you could state your address, please. 41 Berkeley Street. Chairman Hansberry, I find your comments offensive and I read them in the last set of records and sent them to my attorney. I mean, Here's a very specific issue I have. You said the scope of our responsibilities are clearly defined under state law, the city charter, and city ordinances. The state law says that the Board of Assessors will review all abatement applications. From what I can tell, you don't do that. And I put a right to know into the BTLA, paid $8 and got documents sent back to me and asked if they had any evidence that the Board of Assessors is reviewing abatement applications. They sent me back letters that were sent to commercial properties by our assessors that pro these properties were deemed denied with a letter, but it said the board has reviewed your application and it has been deemed denied. And they received the letter. However, you didn't review the application. And when I've been in the meetings, the assessors come in with a long list of names. They read them all and say, all of these are deemed denied. That doesn't mean you're reviewing the applications. So to me, you're not following the law. And it would be super helpful if you explained how you are. We have a city charter that says our records will be open for inspection, immediate inspection, when you go into the assessing department. That's not true. 
I couldn't walk in and get a property record file. Ms. Kleiner implemented a new rule that if you had multiple file requests, you had to fill out a form. But if I wanted one file, two files, or three files, and I was in there for an hour, I couldn't get them. They said, no, they're not available for inspection, and you cannot have them. Never defining what multiple requests meant. I couldn't even get my own property record file. That's the rule of the charter. So the charter has something in it that's written as an affirmation that's a nicety that's not legally binding and not followed. So how do I work with that? And as far as city ordinances, it would be wonderful if you put out a list of ordinances that are there on the website, because God knows I can't really find them, that you follow. You know, I have a major concern. I found in the assessing manual a document on the protocol that will be followed for tax abatement appeals out of the assessing office. This is assessing work. And what it says is, and I came to you as a board and complained that records are being removed from the assessing office and marched around City Hall and data is being lost out of these files. It happened to me. My file ended up in John Griffin's office for a month. My file ended up in the legal office for God knows how long. I got yelled at for going up there trying to get it. And here's the protocol. Assessing will provide legal with a PDF copy of the entire abatement file with our office, including the denial letter sent, property record card for the tax year filed, and copy of the warrant screen to show tax bill assessment issued for the abatement year filed. File will be put in the assessing legal folder in the S drive. No original record will leave the office. That's not being followed. Your mission statement says you're there to make certain they adhere to policy. What are you doing to adhere to policy? I never even get a response to these record issues. And I just discovered this rereading the manual and going over the abatement section. I hadn't read it before carefully. And I told you when I spoke to you that I had had a conversation with Cheryl Wally about this, and she said, it was never done that way when um, Angelo was there and she thought there was a policy. Turns out her name's in this policy. No wonder she was right. And where are our assessors? Greg Turgis as a supervisor, Louise Brown as a supervisor of the clerical staff to put their foot down and not allow our records to disappear. That should be your oversight. And if you view that as a criticism, of a department that you have nothing to do with, none of you should be sitting at that table. Our records should be protected. You know, I also want you to know the data disk that was recently released. I sent an email to Ms. Kleiner a year ago and asked her if she would consider including the depreciation condition and grade, the subjective factors, because we all know in this update, depreciation is what's being looked at. And you can't get a list of that. I was never able to get anyone in the assessing office to help me understand how my depreciation factor compared to other older homes. They would provide no information. So if they would add that field to the data disk, particularly when Vision is going to update these properties in 2022, we would have a complete list to see how these adjustments were made. I waited a year. I never bugged anyone. I know how to wait a long time. The data disk comes out, and the information is never put on with no explanation. Um, the property sales search. I'm disappointed in that because you can't, you can't click on, you can't get a list of any properties. And I believe I wrote to the board. The dashboard I like a lot. I figured out how to download it. But I asked Ms. Kleiner a very specific question a couple days ago that there appear to be sales on the dashboard that are not qualified, but they're listed under qualified. I did a qualified list of sales that came up with 657. I put it in the spreadsheet for the public to have, but some of the sales have an N in the column, not a Q. There is no list of abbreviations to explain what in the, in the NLA field that series of abbreviation means. And Ms. Kleiner only said to me that the information on the dashboard as well as the um, property search is coming from the Canva system, fine. Well, why, why are unqualified sales going into the qualified column? This makes it brutally hard for property owners to pick sales. I picked two and submitted mine that technically aren't qualified. I qualified them. I called the agent. I did the MLS review. I looked at them. I think they're pretty good. 
you can go and figure it out. But they're listed for me to use. And the biggest factor the public has and the biggest criticism of all your assessors when they come in in the work and the evidence that the public submits is that their selection of sold properties is poor. They don't pick the correct properties. And in particular, they bomb on grabbing qualified sales because Mrs. we've never Arnold, had that defined. Mrs. Arnold, Mrs. Arnold, I'm going to ask you to take a minute and wrap things up. I've let you go beyond the allotted time, but I'll give you one more minute to wrap things up. These are pretty serious issues, Dan. And I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted with the response I get from Ms. Kleiner. I'm disgusted with what's happened with my records. I'm disgusted that I can't understand the charter, that I don't understand how state law is followed. And you do nothing to address that, except slap our hands and pull the plug if you don't like what's being said. I am disgusted. Every one of you should resign. And I hope when Rick Vincent gets down here, he's got the stones to push back on this city. He better have a lot of energy. He's going to need it. I am thoroughly disgusted. I will send a blog post out and you can read that. Okay, thank you. Are there comments by members of the board? I have none. No. And there's no need for a non public session, correct, Director Kleiner? Uh, I wish everyone a happy holiday season. And uh, once again, I want to thank IT and wish them a happy holiday season. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. I'll call the roll, Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Bergeron. Yes. The answer is yes. We are adjourned at 10.01 a.m. Thank you. Well, thank you. Happy holidays.